Hey, you are listening to Middle Aged and Mediocre, episode 29. 29. 29. Uh, technically, episode 21, because we deleted the first few episodes where it's just us talking about wrestling. Watching wrestling. Ra- watching wrestling yeah. and talking about Steve it. Steve Carino. So, yeah, Joel's hatred for Steve <laughs> Carino uh, made us quit that but one. But now we can't even talk about that because those episodes don't exist anymore. They don't exist, so you guys can't get listening yeah. to those. So anyways, I'm Cash. <laughs> Joel. And that's Joel. Uh, like I said, this is Middle Asian Mediocre, and this is a podcast about true crime, murder, yeah. unsolved mysteries, uh, just, uh, just weird tales shit of that misfortune. happens in the world. Yeah. yeah. It's just a hodgepodge of strange cases. Just a couple of Middle Asian Mediocre guys just discussing stuff. <laughs> I mean, we are the definition of what this podcast is titled. We are, we are white men. Middle aged, yep, extremely mediocre, and we keep it. We keep it uh, right in that lane. Yeah, like, we don't good. try to get out of it. <laughs> no, so we'll just uh, dance with who brought you. <laughs> uh, if you're first time listener, you can go back and check out uh, all of our episodes. We are on Anchor, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Spotify. Uh, Cast box, I believe. We're in a bunch of different places. Wherever you're listening to it right now, it's probably the app you're going to be using. Yep. So, me telling That's you where, where else you can listen to it <laughs> probably doesn't matter. Look on the internet. Look on the internet. Uh, yeah, we are back. We missed, uh, I believe, a week uh, or so. Shit happens. Yeah. Look, man, we were going to try to do this thing <laughs> weekly, but it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Now you got a job too. I mean, yeah. you had a job for a while. Yeah. And it's just uh, the world sucks. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, I went Monday. I left last Monday and Tuesday. Took the days off work and went to uh, Spruce Knob. With you went, my yeah, you went dad. fishing. Yeah, went yeah. down towards Elkins, West Virginia. You spruced up your knob. Spruced up my knob with my dad. So <laughs> like you put a little bow around your boner. It was. Uh, it, was it was a boner. It was a boner with a W. <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, if you haven't been to Spruce Knob. Uh, Spruce Knob is the highest point in West Virginia, at like a little under six thousand feet, Wink. I think, elevation. Wink, the highest. The high. Point. I was. I actually talked to my dad about that. Yeah. I was like, it'd be so great to like have a blunt or a joint right now. <laughs> and he doesn't smoke or anything, but I was like, this he arrested is- you. He arrested me <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> Citizens arrest. arrest. <laughs> That son of Not a- again, Dad! God damn it, Dad! I'm trying to share a moment with you. I'm trying to connect you with Hippie! you. Hippie. No, he agreed, but he just doesn't. Yeah, uh, that would be cool. Like they make a T-shirt for that. But like, I'm I sure got high. Like I'm sure that's like uh, happened seven billion yeah. times. I mean, is there like a sign that says that? Like this is the <laughs> highest point. In yeah. West Virginia? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's the highest elevation. Yeah. Yeah. So you're up there. I mean, like we went to the very top. There's like an observation. Well, let's tower. go do that. We're gonna let's roll a blunt and we'll right now. We can... We'll be back well, after this. We'll be back in the world, <laughs> after guys. this. Just stay. Just stick with us. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's supposed to be like. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's like a two and a half hour. Should be like a two and a half hour drive, basically. Yeah. Well, my dad decided. I don't know what the hell he did, but I get in the car with him that morning, and he's talking about. He checked out Google Maps or whatever, and we're gonna we're not gonna go all the way to Clarksburg and cut over. Instead, he found this route that takes us like straight there, it's straight shot, but it's back roads. So I was like, all right. And he's like, should be quicker. I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Don't care. I'm off. <laughs> I don't care what we do. Yeah. Uh, You're driving. I'm sitting. Almost four hour, Almost four and a half hours oh, later, wow. we got to Spruce Knob. That's longer than what it normally takes. I have takes. no idea what he found. <laughs> but whatever. Like I said, I wasn't in the office, so I didn't care what we like, – Yeah. But uh, it was it was nice that we found the lake after, like, driving 40 minutes in the wrong oh, direction. Oh, God. It's all bear. That was cool. Oh. I haven't seen a bear in a long time. Did you fight it? A try, but it yeah. ran. It's quick. Quick like a cat. If you see a bear out in the nature, it's important to establish dominance yep, immediately. Punch it, punch it right in the yep, nose. Run right up to it. <laughs> Tickle them. <laughs> Tickle them. I've seen upwards of three animal documentaries. Have your fist pulled back and you're going to punch it? Yeah. And then just start tickling it? <laughs> and it'll be like, oh, I thought you were going to punch me. <laughs> Who's a little ticklish bear? <laughs> and use your voice like that, too. Who's the good bear? <laughs> Who's the good bear? Did you catch any fish? I did not. Oh. Uh, the next morning we found another place to go fishing. My dad caught one. Yeah. But eh. It's more about the, the time it's shared. About the experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's but awesome. Glad you got to get away. People show up with like inflatable rafts. 
or something like inflatable, like a uh, little paddle boat type things. Oh yeah. I was, I was like, I'm never going to trust that. that. Which I mean, I know, I guess like inner tubes and shit are just yeah. inflatable, but the whole thing seemed very. I, how many people got in it? Two on each one. Yeah, I don't think I was. Did they have to blow it up by their mouth or? They did had they? like a. They backed their vehicle down by the lake, and then they had like oh. uh, air, like a. Oh, they just air plugged compressor. It in and, yeah. yeah, you should have gone down and asked them if they could use their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, would you guys mind? Uh, hey guys, I'd rather watch blowing you guys that do up this manually, <laughs> orally. <laughs> Hold on, let me take my shirt off first. <laughs> Saw a bunch of. Uh, I know you're into this, and uh, I, th- I feel like this just became like a big thing. But kayaking, yeah, like. Everybody, like, is that, that's like, get your what, float on. what happened? I don't How know. How did that become? I didn't do it till last summer, so I had a, uh, I, I've, I've heard tell about kayaks, but I never did it, and then last summer, my buddy let me use one of his, and I liked it, so that's why I just wanted to get one this year, and I think it's because of what's going on with the COVID, it's just social distancing, and like, you get on the water, man, and you know, your paddle's six foot long, so yeah. you're not going to be getting close to people. But I like just getting on the water and floating, man. Just connecting to nature. I did. I you know. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. When you're done, you just fuck your kayak. You just you get- f- <laughs> wait. You fuck the kayak. Yeah, yeah. You got it. You can buy them with a special fuck hole. I don't think that's a fuck hole, Joel. <laughs> I think nah, that I'm is in kidding. case water gets in it. You pull the plug. It's an on emotional it, fucking. And it drains the water. <laughs> you shouldn't fuck that hole. That's a little hole. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the only reason I didn't fuck it. That's the only reason. <laughs> no, but I like kayaking. It's fun. But I'm you saw sure, a bunch? Man. Yeah, I saw a shitload of yeah. people. With, like, I see them. You just see them driving around now all the time. Which, and, like you said, with all everything going on. And kayak is spelled the same, frontward and backwards. It is. It's one of them words. Yeah. That's yep. a fact. Jack. In the episode. That's, that's all, it. Saw episode you guys 29. Even, solve that mystery. <laughs> Uh, kayak, kayak, yeah, kayak, man, kayak. I would, I would love to be like I know uh, our buddy Cliff Cash, yep. a comedian. Like uh, he just lives out of his, he just That's he bought nice a van, thing. like kind of yeah. like built it, like uh, he, like did he custom make it? Oh or? yeah, yeah, he put like a counter in there. I think he has like a probably you know he's got shelves in there and put. But a he bed lives in it now. And, just yeah. travel. He like stays in state parks, and national forests, <laughs> and shit like that. That's the life, man. Like, yeah, I don't know how he. Like, it's probably harder now because there's not a lot of comedy going on. It's true. Yeah. And I don't know what he's doing for but I mean. It's tough. All the people that just grinded to get by with comedy, which he right. does other stuff too. He does sells pictures. I know he does construction. He's, you know, he's a multi-talented guy, but still, yeah. it's, shit's been weird. Might as well get a kayak. Right. Wrestling. There's a bunch of wrestling coming back, which yeah. I'm against. Yeah, but know. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. Yeah, I'm not. Same with comedy. Yeah. Like, I'm not for me, but I'm not going to. I mean, I don't. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it. You know, it doesn't matter what I think. I don't think it matters what I think. So, because I wouldn't give a fuck, you know, if someone was like, oh, well, don't do this, Joel, because I right. wouldn't do it. But, like, all right, well, then don't do it. Now I'm definitely going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, just because, you know, you don't want to do it doesn't mean I can't do it. So, it's, you know, I try to push that energy out. You know, I wouldn't. We I decided, wouldn't treat others differently than how I expected. We decided we're going to bring, we're going to hold off on bringing Inception back. Yeah. Uh, Pro Wrestling Inception. So we'll, well start that gives me a chance and, to train. That's right. Get those. Uh, yeah. I, I found, uh, I was going through your tweets, <laughs> and I found your tryout date again. Brought back some good memories. <laughs> oh, I see some of those pictures sometimes. Or like, there's a, there's like a video where I think I ran the ropes and Tim hit me with like a leg yeah. lariat or something. Yeah. It's just so bad. Man, you, I didn't realize... Because I see you pretty often. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize how much weight you lost. Yeah, thanks. Like. That's so hard for me to take because I, like, I hear I know, that. Weird. And it's weird. But anyway, I'm like, oh, but I put some back on. And I know I'm not, you know. But, but yeah. I, I, no, like, I don't even remember. I don't even remember that, Joel. Yeah. Like, I know that's weird, but. Because you just, you know, I, like you say, you see me so much. Yeah, yeah. It's just like Lily. You know, she grows up so tall, but I just see it. But right. Other people, you know, they don't see her She's for seven foot six now. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how you missed it. She just got drafted to the NBA. <laughs> she's in Orlando now. She's in the bubble. Yeah, she's like 11. <laughs> yeah, nine. She nine. She's okay. almost, yeah. Almost and she's in the seven. NBA. So, yeah. I don't know how you missed that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, thanks, man. Let's talk about me and how good I look. All so, right, uh, man. So, <laughs> so, you wouldn't fuck me before, but now you're totally But down. now I'm like 20% <laughs> more interested. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. That's, that's, that's like, the number I'm going Like, for. now, if we were the last two on Earth, I'd consider it. <laughs> Aww. Before, I was like, hard no. Well, hard time, pass. Time to start killing everybody. 
2020 started on that for you, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. I was telling you how when I was going back through. We're going to do a thing here soon where we uh, we read some tweets. Yep. That he sh- that I went and found some of Joel's tweets. He went and found some of mine. But like I was telling, I was telling you about how like I saw your like December 2019, January 2020 yeah. tweets, and like they were man. hopeful. It and was I, so hopeful back then. All I could like, all oh. I could think about is like everyone's tweets from that time, yeah. and just how full of hope everyone was. No I think, one saw this. Shit I think coming. that'd be a fun. You should start like a second Twitter and just do just that, where people. you like retweet with you know, where you retweet with a quote, where you put what you want to put, and just like famous people, regular people, just whatever, just go through there. I might like how that work out for you. I might just start one to retweet, <laughs> not even like bother with. Commenting, yeah, just read. Yeah, I might be, I might start that. All right, this start, with, start with mine. I was probably super hopeful, man. I was getting comedy lined yeah. up. I had rest, I was a wrestling ring announcer. Well, because I mean, every year you get the whatever year is gonna be my year, yeah, which is always the dumbest shit in the world. But, but then you know, especially like but going through this a divorce year. and like everything and living on my own for the first yeah. time ever, turning yeah, 40, yeah, of, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I bet that was so annoying to go back and read through. And then murder horns. And then just sad Joel for like the <laughs> next like like why do I do I drink to cry or cry when I drink? Do it in next week. A lot of it was just drunk again. Drunk <laughs> Blink one eighty two. Drunk Blink one eighty two. <laughs> well mine's not for that gonna be any better. No, uh, it wasn't. You had a lot of retweets. We'll talk about that, yeah, though. We'll I, get into I that. retweet a lot. Should we do that now, or do we do yeah, that well, after by the story? way, so uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter. Uh, Sick, but with the lisp. But you got to search for born into filth. Yeah, I just like your name. That's so funny. Sick, but with a lisp. Yeah. yeah. Thick. Uh, so it's thick. 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 Because uh, I'm a thick boy. Yeah. Uh, and you're wide open on your Twitter. Oh, I don't give a shit. You're man. unlocked. I'm unlocked. I don't give Pants a fuck. down. I don't give a fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bending over, coughing. You got nothing to yeah. hide. You got to, I didn't, I didn't, well, I'll save it. I, I yeah. didn't use it this time, but I'll, I'll use it later time. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so I, if you want to search for me on Twitter and follow me, it's born into filth, uh, B O R N I N T O F I L T H. Yep. And then if you want to follow Joel, you're going to have to get past the security guard for Joel. Cause <laughs> Which Joel's... all you have to do is just try to follow me and I'll let you. Yeah. It's just, it's all work related bullshit that, like, I can't keep my Twitter open. So, you know, if you're going to use it for <laughs> uh, devious purposes, don't follow Joel. <laughs> Be honest, people. Yeah. You're, we're going to do the uh, trust system. Like, if you just want to see, like, because Twitter. Like Facebook is like I feel that where I'm the realist. Instagram is probably like what I try to pretend to be, and Twitter is just like meh. Oh. Like not all meh, but like for the most part, that's just kind of where I go. And like Twitter I'll, is like if you want to know who I am, yeah. Like go to Twitter, yeah. Facebook, I barely. I only put I only post on Facebook if I have like a actual like if I feel like there's something I need to say, yeah. I'll post like I don't yeah I don't post a lot of Facebook. It's mostly Lily stuff. It'll be a record or something, or like if I run, yeah, just like to show that I'm working out and stuff. But my Twitter is probably it, it moved back to being my favorite again. Like it was yeah, my first, yeah. and then when I once <laughs> and then uh, once I got into comedy, I did Facebook and Instagram, but I was never on MySpace. We we're talking about that. Yeah, yeah. I was ne- but I got you on never, Twitter. You, ne- you were never on MySpace. Nope. And the first joke I ever wrote was actually a tweet, you know, and like I was like, oh, I was like that might work on stage, and like that kind of started all that. So you're three year. You're forty. Yeah, forty. So you're three years older than me. So I MySpace, I was that was had to have been when I was like twenty one twenty. I early twenties. Yeah. So, I was so you just mid- like you just didn't bother with it, or I didn't have a computer, and this is like before smartphones, so you weren't you weren't on MySpace on your phone, were you? No, no. yeah, like I'm sure you could have, but yeah, no. you were on a computer, and I just I wasn't a computer guy. I was like, let's get fucked up and do some drugs, guy. Yeah. Like that was that was the space I was in. Yeah, I was. That t- was MySpace. That was your space. <laughs> I was telling you about how like MySpace. Like the top eight, yeah. The f- top eight was so important. I remember you could do something where like a, a song would play or something, and someone got on your page. That was super annoying when people did that. Okay, because you'd go to their page and like if you were listening to your own music or if you had headphones on uh-huh. or if like your speakers were just up too loud, it would just ah. it would just fuck. It was always louder <laughs> than everything else. No, like, always like Crazy Town Butterfly. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that was a big one at the time. <laughs> For the ladies. But it was just always something super fucking obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I, I remember... I can't believe I wasn't on MySpace. 
the, the MySpace days were the same time frame, maybe a little, like, right around there as the uh, AOL Instant Messenger. I kind of fucked around with that a little bit because that was right before I moved out of my parents' house. Mm. Like, I had AOL Messengers, and I was in the lesbian chat room. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm Jolina. I am sounding like the biggest douchebag this episode oh, already. Here, I'll, I'll go ahead and help you out. <laughs> okay, I'll, good. I'll you out. Okay. My AOL Instant Messenger handle was... Let me... Can I guess yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You're never oh, going to get man. it, but go ahead and guess it. Like something like High Boy 69 like H-I-G-H, no, or... No. No, it was a different kind of douchey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It was... Uh, like, with m- missing some letters, it was emo-flavored Slurpee. <laughs> So I'll take I'll take the weight off your shoulders on that one. All right, good, good, yeah. yeah. Emo flavored Slurpee. <laughs> I'm going to uh, put that on a shirt or something. Uh, yeah, I was I was a scene kid for sure. Emo flavor, and it worked for me, man. But like AOL was a mystery. I remember you could leave away messages, and you always had to hit like you always had to like put in like a gr- like a song lyric. Away message. What's that mean? Like if you weren't like if you're like away. Oh, you weren't sitting in front of the computer. Sitting, whatever. Yeah. You could put up an away message. And you would always make it like a lyric, like a like a meaningful lyric. Show people how deep you are. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, hey, now you're an all star. <laughs> Get your game on. Go play. Hey, now. And they're like, hey, you know what? I am gonna go play their emo Slurpee sixty nine. Thank you, emo Slurpee sixty nine. <laughs> no, I don't think I ever had a sixty nine. I don't think I've ever had a screen name with like a number in it. Okay. I, I thought you meant like in real life too. No. You've never had a sixty nine. <laughs> No, we don't need to talk about. I've conquered. Most, <laughs> I've conquered most numbers. Good. I, I, I like Tom Segura's where he's talking about sixty nine, and he's like, "Are you in a hurry?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I laugh so fucking hard at Tom Segura, but his latest Netflix special he talks about that, <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, I was obsessed with it. Like, oh, from yeah. a little kid, you know." He's like, "I had five years old. How, what do you want for your birthday? It's fucking sixty nine. I was sixty nine. He's like, and I finally did it. You know, he's like, what, what, what? He's like, are you in a hurry or something? Like, you do me, and then I'll do you. Are you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it way wrong. I mean, I'm not doing him any credit." But a dude I used to work with uh, brought his uh, laptop in one time. He couldn't get it to work. There was something wrong with it, so he brings it in to me, and I start I like start trying to get it to work. And I get to the part where I have to put a password in uh-huh. to open up, his, you know. And so he tells me his username, and then I go, "Can I try to Can I try to guess your password?" <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, I mean, if you can get it." So I won't say his name, but it was his name. For twenty sixty nine, <laughs> and that was the first thing I put in, and it worked. Aww. And he was like, "He goes, Dude, you shouldn't me, you got that." <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, everything about you screams <laughs> that your screen name ended in four twenty sixty nine. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, I had yeah, I had MySpace, uh, it, all that shit. I used to use Yahoo Chat a lot. Uh huh. Just those were like the <laughs> what was, what's that? Oh, the, the dial-up. yeah, oh the dial-up God. noise. I actually said what? I actually forgot all about that. <laughs> You're gonna punch me! You're like, oh my God, he's he's possessed. Is he having a stroke? <laughs> and then I don't even under the it. table. I'm I having multiple strokes. Ugh. Yeah, I didn't have Facebook either for a long time. So okay, so what? Uh, you want to go first? Want me to go yeah, first? I'll go first. Okay. But here's mine. I did things a little different. Okay. Okay. What you? I want to see how well you know your own Twitter. So okay. I'm gonna read a tweet, and I want to tell. I want you to tell me if it's one of yours or oh. one of Donald Trump's. <laughs> and give it a second, so the listener can try to guess too. Okay. Okay. All right. So this will be the first one. This is from. Uh, well, I won't tell the date because I told you I couldn't go. I have never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke. Do you think that's you or Donald Trump? That's not me. That's Donald Trump yeah. from October 14th. What a hacky yeah. take off. Like that, I, I saw shit. that. I was like, fuck you, Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, that's definitely not. Yeah. Next one. West Virginia State Bird is the pepperoni oh, roll. That's, that's you. I, to, I know you're going to know these. People time. I just like reading I'm, Donald I'm Trump. I'm proud tweets. of that one. Um, this one. My dumb ass just blew on my lucky charms like they were a steaming hot spoonful of magically delicious chili. That's me. That's you. That's the most. That's the. That could be Trump, though. That could be Trump. <laughs> uh, he. I'm sure Trump eats Lucky Charm chili. Lucky Charm chili in his boom boom room. Yeah, that's actually my first tweet on that account. Like, I apparently we figured out I must have yeah. had to make a new account at some point. It had one like, and it was me because I really man. liked it. And I laughed again when I saw it. 
Okay, here's another one. Okay. Sorry, losers and haters, but my IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. Please don't feel so stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. That has to be Trump. Yep, that's, that's Trump. It. The only way I would ever use the word of haters is if I was just trying to be annoying. <laughs> haters. And that was uh, from 2013. Sounds like before oh, he was even... Back? Oh, that's his. I, I did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't want to... Oh, yeah, he's been tweeting some stupid shit for a long time. This it's is not a... new. He's been dumb his whole life. Yeah. Ladies, start making dudes apply for sex. Three references required. Prior history must be included. Also, unionize. Also, also, carry around the personal bag of ven- venomous snakes to throw at guys who bother you. That's me. That's I have you. a lot of advice for ladies. <laughs> That's really good advice, though. I have quite a few tweets to start with ladies. <laughs> ladies! And then it's followed by pretty good <laughs> advice, I think. You might want to clean out your ears for this one, girls. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, we got a couple more here. This is probably my favorite one. While Bette Midler is an extremely unattractive woman, I refuse to say that because I always insist on being politically correct. That's got to be something <laughs> that dumbass Trump said. <laughs> That's Trump. He okay. would never say that. That's just so funny. While she is an unattractive yeah, woman, I, I wouldn't say it. I actually remember that tweet. I've seen that, tre- <laughs> tre- that tweet retweeted. That was 2012. Um, all right, this is the last one. Don't be a coward. Sneeze when you come and try not to shit yourself. <laughs> Seize the day. Don't live a life you'll regret is what I'm saying. That's, that's got to be me. That's Trump. That's Trump. He just tweeted that oh, okay. five minutes ago. That's, I believe it. <laughs> Hashtag masks are a hoax. No, that was that was you. That was that was Sin that was police. sick, but with the lisp at born in the filth. Yeah, yeah. So no. those were some of your tweets. I liked your stuff. Man, you did a lot more work than I did for yeah. that. Well, I did it all today, so not really. I did too. <laughs> I was at work. It took like five minutes. I was like just doing it. And I was like, I was like, man, it's like Josh has got some good ones. And I was like, I wonder what Trump tweets are like. And I like googled like worst Trump tweets or something. And that's a good. And read. then you spent seventeen hours. <laughs> yeah, it's just all of his tweets. All of them. It just takes you to his Twitter page. It's he's such a fucking douchebag. I don't even think he has a Twitter because I Google Twitter like Donald Trump, but all like the whole Donald Trump thing is just him retweeting the White House. So I don't even, does he have, am yeah, I blocked yeah, from it or yeah, maybe you, I'm blocked from you, it? I don't even it's, know. It's real Donald Trump. Okay. Yeah. See, I just like searched Donald Trump on Twitter and that's all I could find. But then I Googled worst Donald Trump mm, tweets. No, it's real And that's real like when Donald I saw Trump. the other stuff. Because apparently there was a bunch of Donald, like Donald Why Trump. Why would somebody do that to at him? Donald Trump was apparently already taken. Yeah. So. I'd like to get at Donald Trump. Uh, Punch him. All right. So first one from you, I I included this one just because I hate it so much. <laughs> You're going to say that before every single one of these. It's from May 22nd, and it is, uh, <laughs> what is it about giant advertisements on the side of the road that makes Bill bored? <laughs> I hate it. That is so dumb. I hate it so much. And I probably thought about that tweet and like reworded it in my head like a hundred times, and like you know it was too long at first, so I tried to trimmed it down. Yeah, huh. made it read a, it again. Made read it, it again. Made it a type two. Let let me just breathe it in okay. like a nice warm glass, warm like a nice glass of champagne. Uh, I'll I'll read it like I'm uh, delivering it here. Uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, <laughs> what is it about giant advertisements on the side? On the side of the road that makes Bill bored. Because they're called billboards. Oh. <laughs> it's not going to travel around with a dude named because Bill. Bored yeah, people's... Aver- big advertisements. Wow. Are... Okay. So, you hate yeah. it even more. <laughs> that's that's, that that's the one. sound of everybody stop listening to this yeah. episode. Oh, God, please come back. <laughs> we need you. Uh, I can actually look in the... Uh, it shows me when people... St- like, how far into the episode. Oh, really? Like, yeah. I could actually go back and figure that out. <laughs> Uh, okay, so here's one from July. Well, probably when I talk about fucking the kayak, they're like this guy. <laughs> here's one from July third. Okay, and uh, this is a strong opinion. This is a recent one, and I don't know if I agree with it, but you make a. I mean, there's an argument to be made. Okay, uh, side boob is <coughs> greater than full frontal. That's just how it is. Yep. I'll. I. Yep. I mean, when I first saw it, I immediately disagreed, and sure. then I thought about it a little bit, and I don't know now. Dude, side boob is the sexiest boob. I. Th- 
Like nipples so are great. So when you say full frontal, you just mean yeah. like topless, like from the front. I mean nipples, everything. Just like full. I, yeah. Just still, it's side still boob does side it for boob. You. Yeah, because there's a. They, it, you don't know what's you know. You see a lot, but you don't see it all. You don't see it all. You like yeah. a little bit of. And uh, I mean on guys too. I'm not trying to be <laughs> objective. Like, I'm not trying to like make women you know objects of whatever. I'm just also, saying. Also, you you love to go down to Bent Barbell Club. And, <laughs> oh yeah, and look at the dudes. The way those dudes cut their shirts. <laughs> yeah, and you see them the muscles there on their sides. Nah, but yeah, I, I don't. I think you. In might. this case, I am talking about ladies. I think you might be right. I think I might have to agree with you on this. That day when I tweeted that, I saw some side boob, no bra, side boob, and uh, it was a. Uh, no, I like. It's good. I like the. Uh, the side boob with a bra and the shirt cut, yeah, all the way like to where like they they cut the same way dudes at the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have the bra on. I like that look. Okay, like, that's a good look. That's a solid summer look. If you want to send some pictures of side boobs, <laughs> hey, let's you know hashtag side boob. Hashtag side boob. Yeah, I stand by that. I you know what? I think I'm gonna have to agree with you on this. Good. I think you swayed okay. me. Good. So that this that's is why what we're this, here. This is what this episode is about. <laughs> yeah. Changing minds. All right, and this one, this is, this is the last one I got, and I'm just going to need an explanation. Oh, brother. Uh, because I don't know what, I need to know what's going through your head. I need uh. to know what the context is. June 24th, this is the official sign-up for the Parmesan cheese trucking <laughs> contest. Contest. Losers need not apply. <laughs> I need to know if something, if something. Uh, well, sometimes when you're a young lad and you're home. And uh, you got the munchies, and you don't have any food in the house, but sometimes you got Parmesan cheese in the fridge, and you just pop that sucker open, and just... And just the, like, the dusty-ass yeah. <laughs> yeah. Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese challenge. And you're just... And I was like, man, I am good at this. And I was thinking, you know, I'm going to so have So you were a... putting out, like, a challenge. Yeah, you were like... that was a real thing. I was eating Parmesan cheese wow. just, like, straight into my mouth, because that's... I feel like it's a like it's like saying I'm the I'm just you know, it's awful <laughs> it like it gets all like caked to the roof of your mouth and... oh that sounds <laughs> fucking disgusting but I open up I don't open up the side that has just the little tiny holes I open up the side oh you that open have up the fucking the, the the big smiley mouth yep the smiley mouth and it goes into my smiley and mouth, smiley <laughs> mouth. <laughs> and then your smiley mouth it's like a like a gluey <laughs> mouth <laughs> cheese glue if you will. Yep, and that's why Parmesan cheese doesn't last at my house very long. All right, man. <laughs> so if you got side boob and you want to chug some Parmesan cheese on the side of the road, Bill, come to my Twitter. Yeah, and if you want to go to his Twitter, uh, you can follow it at the Joel M G at the Joel at M-G. the Joel M G. It's yeah. uh, capital T H E, capital J O E L, <laughs> capital M G. Yeah. Uh, and what's your what's so what's the M? Michael. Michael, okay. Yeah. So, Magical. Like, Wink. Makes me think of, you're so close to being Jan Michael Vincent. Uh, my dad's name is Jan Michael Gant. Dude. You have to edit that out. He doesn't want, I'm not allowed to say I that he's my dad. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the, Jan Michael Vincent from one of the greatest TV shows of all time. Punky Brewster? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's. Uh, is, does, does she play Punky Brewster? She, she does not. Jan Michael Vincent's a dude. Oh, okay. From uh, funny story, my dad's a dude. Your dad is a dude. But when he joined the air no, force, when no. he joined the air force, they put him in a woman's boot camp because the name Jan is typically a woman's name. That sounds like a Bill Murray comedy from the eighties. <laughs> that, that's what happened. And I was like, I'll stay here because my dad's a cut up funny guy. And they're like, <laughs> they're the men's bears with you, pal. That is an eighties comedy. <laughs> it is right. Yeah. And he's got to like keep pretending that he is a woman. Now, are you just assuming his gender, or has he made it very clear? Well, I mean, when we used to go to the beach when I was a little kid, I remember I'd, I'd, I'd like, take a shower with him and stuff, you know, at the same time. <laughs> it's such Look, a man, weird fucking just cause you, Just because you have a dick doesn't mean you're a guy. I don't want to talk about fucking this anymore. get woke. <laughs> I just had a monster. I'm so woke. No, J. Michael Vincent was in Airwolf. Airwolf? Airwolf, one of the greatest 80s TV shows ever It was a TV made. show. Yeah. Is it like a wolf that can fly? It's not. Uh, Airwolf. It had a badass helicopter, though. Okay. It was one of my favorite shows as a kid. So the Airwolf was a helicopter. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think that was, yeah. Okay. I mean, I haven't watched it since I was a kid. It's probably shitty. It's like, what if Knight Rider was a helicopter? There you go. 
Airwolf. What if? He'd be Airwolf. Yeah. And that sounds cool like an 80s shit. movie. Airwolf? Yeah. It's like Air Bud, only Air Wolf. But a wolf. Yeah. All right, so. Buzz's girlfriend. Wolf. <laughs> What's that from, people? Yeah. Home Alone. There you go. Uh, yeah, so there's our Twitter. Uh, you guys should follow us. Yeah. Born in the Filth and the Joel MG. Or you can follow our um, actual show Twitter. We got Twitter. And you can follow us on there at Mid-Age Mediocre. And at the end of August, we're going to put all the names in a hat, pull out a name, and murder that person and do yeah. an episode about it. And then it. do an episode about yeah. it. Yeah, so follow us. If for you your ever chance to be famous, for your chance to get this murdered, this is the way to do it. <laughs> but you will get like twenty five people that probably listen to it. Yeah, so that's cool. All right, man, you ready? But for But one uh, less because we'll have to kill one of them. We'll have to kill. So yeah, we're kind of doing ourselves cutting into our numbers. Uh, we should have th- thought that. Up. Might just maim you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe just maim that you. This still be a good story. Yeah. Like, why do you only have thumbs? Like, or we'll I mean, you. maybe you sign up and you give us a name oh, of somebody that doesn't follow us. Yeah. Or listen, we'll and kill we kill them. <laughs> So we gonna kill someone. Look, one one way we're gonna kill somebody. Yeah, you ready for the episode? Yeah, you ready for the? Uh, Is that not it? The meat. Of Are this, we doing more? The meat of this episode. Right. Oh, give me. You ready for meat. the meat? Yep. All right, let's get to the meat. All right, man. <laughs> so uh, our good friend, a uh, friend of the show, Brandon Fool, uh, okay. who co-hosts the podcast Dueling Ogres. I still have his shirt. Out. You still have a shirt for yep. him for us? Yeah, he got a hold of me uh, yesterday, I believe. Uh huh. And said uh, he had a story for us that we he thought we'd probably dig that we could do an episode about. It was great timing because yeah. I was having trouble finding anything, and I was too because I wasn't looking. Yeah, makes it almost <laughs> impossible when you're not looking. Damn near. So when he first sent it, um, he he told me he's like I don't know if there's enough really here for a full episode, but and I, at first I couldn't really find much info about this, uh-huh. so I thought about doing uh, an episode with two short stories. And just, you know, figure that. But then I found a bunch of shit about this. You, you made it up, didn't you? I wrote this story. <laughs> no, I found a bunch of info about this, and it's really fucking kind of batshit crazy and weird. Cool. So, uh, we are going to take a break there real quick. Okay. Uh, and let you guys listen to an ad. And then uh, we'll get back, and we will tell the story of the uh, the mystery of the lead masks. The lead masks. Mm-hmm. So, we'll be right back. All right, and we're back. Uh, so yeah, this is the story of uh, this is the mystery, whatever you want to call it, of the lead masks, and just a. Uh, I know you got a kick out of it last time it happened, so just a warning up front. Uh huh. This takes place in Brazil, so there's going to be a lot of names and stuff. And I'm probably going to do an accent cool. when I pronounce them because I can't help it because <laughs> that's how you got to say it. That's right. So, uh, 1966 is when this takes place in Brazil, like I said. Miguel Viana and Manuel da Cruz, uh, both married and with young families. They were both in their mid-30s, early 30s, actually, uh, were highly regarded in the city of Campos where they lived. They had set out by bus for... Uh, I think it's N- Niteroi, Niteroi, something like that, at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, August 17th, having left word that they were off to San Paulo or Sao Paulo to buy a car and electronic equipment. They took with them a sum of money estimated at around 3 million cruceros. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I tried to find out what the uh, uh, exchange rate would be uh-huh. on that, and I can't figure it Like I couldn't really figure it out. Yeah. But, I mean, whatever, like the crucero... Cruzero, whatever it was, they had three million of them uh, in a briefcase, uh, handcuffed to their wrist. Their bus reached their destination at about two p.m. and as it was raining, they purchased identical raincoats for nine thousand four hundred <laughs> cruceros. So the exchange rate could not have been great. No, these could not have been val- these couldn't have been very valued. Well, shit, they still got over two and a half million of them left. Right. Uh, their next visit was to a bar where they bought a bottle of mineral water. They retained the receipt so that the refund on the empty bottle could be claimed. Then, at about 3.15, they set off on foot up the Moro de, Moro de Ventem Hill. Uh, at about 5 p.m., a boy saw them sitting at a point high up on the hill and, puzzled by what he had seen, returned to the spot the next day. He saw the men lying on the ground, and thinking they were asleep, he left the place. 
That was on the Thursday. On Saturday, August 20th, the same boy was out hunting birds on the hill. Uh, it's also said that he was uh, flying a kite. He was 18 years old, a kid named uh, Jorge Da Costa Alves. So he was hunting and flying a kite? Like, there's conflicting. The, a maybe he's hunting with the kite? Maybe he's trying to get some birds? Get some birds? Yeah. There's a lot of conflicting shit, uh-huh. like, for this. Uh, but yeah, which I found was odd that like an eighteen year old kid would be flying a kite. That just doesn't seem like an eighteen year old kid thing. But but it's nineteen sixty three. Yeah, and... it's a sixty six. It's a simpler yeah. time. Oh, okay, yeah. By sixty six, they were done flying kites. Right, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sixty three. That's really when eighteen year old kite flying peaked in Brazil. Peaked. After okay, that, man. I've done a lot Brazil. of Brazil kite studying. <laughs> you know, I've actually come across this story before. But I'm gonna let you finish. Thank you. I appreciate okay. that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he was out there either hunting birds or flying Fly a, kite, a kite or both, like you said, yeah. when he, uh, was suddenly nauseated by a strong odor. He ran and told his friends who in turn told the police, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Like, so yeah. ac- according to this, I, people in Parker are be calling the cops all the goddamn time. <laughs> it would just be all the, it every time you here. come across Memorial Bridge, <laughs> yeah. you smell the fucking, whatever that is right uh-huh. there, sewer. So yeah, like it's kind of weird that he apparently didn't actually see the bodies again. Yeah. Anyways, so the bodies of Miguel and Manuel were discovered, each neatly dressed in suits and their new raincoats, and each with a strange lead mask on the ground beside their head. And the lead mask looked like a picture of Bret Hart's sunglasses. Okay. It was handed to kids. Uh Uh-huh. And it just looked like big lead versions of those. So, like, just big lead glasses. Huh. Like solid pieces. Yeah, almost like alien eyes or something then. Like uh like uh like you know like the uh, old school covers you'd put on your glasses, like the sunglass like you could attach sunglass oh, yeah. lenses to yeah. your glasses. Yeah. Kinda like those. Like the flip downs or like whatever. Like a flip down, yeah, yeah kinda okay. like those. Huh. Uh also discovered were notes with instructions that said uh, quote, Sunday, one capsule after lunch, Wednesday, one capsule at bedtime, and, quote, be at the place arranged at 1630, which would be, what, 430. 430. Take capsules at 1830, so 630. After feeling the effects, protect half the face with lead masks. Await the agreed signal. So that was on a note found beside them. Huh. Uh, some days later, it was discovered that the handwriting of the note was not that of either of the dead men. According to the... Because dead men can't write, dude. That is a fact. I haven't even been to, like, like murder college, <laughs> and I knew that. <laughs> murder. <laughs> What's one of the best murder colleges <laughs> in the in the, in the the country? Murder you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just please do. Uh... <laughs> Quote. I wasn't even playing you guys. That was just us. That was just That's us. That's just us riffing. our natural chemistry. Uh, <laughs> according to the Sao Paulo newspaper, Ultima Hora, or probably Aura, so the ultimate hour, uh, of August 24th. That's a good wrestling. Ultima Aura, yeah. <laughs> uh, Miguel was found to have 150, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say dollars because okay. I can't say. Yeah. 157,000 monetary units yep. in a plastic bag in his clothing, while Manuel had 4,000 4, monetary units in his pockets. So they went from two and a half million. Well, maybe. Okay. So. Slow down, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> they, they Maybe. Cause so the three million was, they had that with them when they left in a briefcase. Uh-huh. So then, this money is is on their bodies, yeah. like one hundred fifty seven thousand in a plastic bag in his clothing, and Manuel had four thousand in his pockets. Man. So I don't know if they had this money in addition to you. the three million. Uh, naturally enough, the first theory was that the men had been attacked and robbed. A large number of cruceros cru- 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 had disappeared, and there was no sign of any electrical equipment. By the way, these guys are. Uh, Electric electricians. Uh, electric electricians. <laughs> electric electricians. Some say the best kind of electricians. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, you definitely want the electric kind. Uh, there was no sign of any electrical equipment they might have purchased. Uh, indeed, instru- reconstruction of their movements indicated that they could not have made any such purchases. Autopsies revealed that there were no signs of violence of any kind to the bodies, which had started to decompose by the time they were found. 
ore of burning and that no poisons were discovered in the internal organs. It was stated that there was no known cause for the cardiac failures. Together with the theory of robbery, there were suggestions that possibly Miguel and Manuel had been engaged on a smuggling operation for currency regulations made f- that because currency regulations made foreign electronic equipment difficult to come by in Brazil. There was also a hint that they might have been engaged in espionage, Ooh. but when it was announced that they had not suffered any physical violence, theories about the cause of their simultaneous deaths began to move way out. Skipping the more obvious idea that they could have overdosed themselves with some sort of chemical in the capsules that the note was talking about, yeah. the authorities in the newspapers played up the hypothesis that the victims had been the victims had been killed by con- while conducting an unusual electronic experiment. Another commentator suggested a little sin- sinisterly, sinisterly that they had died the time of the expected signal. A great deal of head scratching was rudely interrupted by the next development. The uh, Brazil Journal and other newspapers of August 25th started startled everyone with the story of Gracinda Barbosa Cortino da Sousa, okay. a lady of high society, who stated that she had seen an unusual object flying over the hill that the two bodies were discovered on the evening of August 17th. Hmm. In the Brazil Journal, Senora da Sousa was described as a sensible, well-balanced lady, entirely reliable, and very very highly regarded in Fonseca, where she lived. Her story was that she was driving along with three of her children when they saw an oval-shaped object of an orangey color with a band of fire around its edges. The object was sending out rays in all directions and was hanging over the top of the hill. That's the sun. That's the sun. It does sound like the sun. That description does make it sound like that. Uh, she's. I have never. <laughs> you're telling me the thing goes down and up Every at day? varying times. <laughs> she stopped the car and with her children and she with couldn't her children, even look at the object straight on. It hurt her eyes <laughs> if she looked at it for too long. Uh, she stopped with her children and watched the object as it rose and fell uh, vertically for some three or four minutes. All right, the sun doesn't do so that. So the sun doesn't like a cartoon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, when she returned home... Is this a cartoon? You didn't say if this story takes place in Wait till the end. Okay, I'm sorry. When she returned home, she told her husband about the sighting, and he straight away drove down to the observation point, but saw nothing. A few days later, when the story broke about the discovery of the bodies on the hill, uh, her husband took steps to keep the news of the tragedy from his wife, and then went to inform the police. The Brazil Journal stated that the certain other details not quoted in the report were given to the police by Senora de Sousa. Senor. Senor. When she's being interviewed. Uh, these, it was added, these details were being kept secret by order of the chief of police. The news that someone so prominent had taken the plunge into UFO conspiracies prompted several other people to telephone the police with confirmations of her sighting. Their reason for not coming forward earlier, it was stated, was that they thought the object was a flying saucer, and they preferred to keep quiet about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the mystery was heightened by the revelation that in 1962, another man, a TV technician named Hermes, had also been found dead on the top of a nearby hill, Ooh. and his corpse also had a lead mask. Hey, what the hell is going it. on? What in the king of the hill? <laughs> Speculation, so he, mask, he also had a lead mask. Uh, and the hill was like, um, it was very, I forget how close it was, but it was like right there, like within the same area. I feel like if you're talking about hills, it's going to be like a stone's throw away. A what? You ever hear people say, that's about oh, stone's I throw you, away. Man. I thought you meant yeah. like the Rolling Stones. Yeah. They were around in 66. I was trying to think of what song they had about hills. All of them. Like the Hills <laughs> Department. They had, they had All a, their songs are about hills. They had a great jingle for Hills Department Store. Yeah. Oh, hills was cool. They had the popcorn thing. They sold like the food out front. Oh, they had soft pretzels. Yeah. You could get a soft pretzel and an icy. Man. And they had the best toys. Bring back hills. I wish. No doubt. I used to always have to go get a... Uh, I used to get uh, warts on my finger. Uh-huh. My fingers. Like, I still have like, scars. Oh, yeah. Look at you that. can see. But I used to get them really bad on all my fingers for some reason. That's so fucking gross. So I'd have to go get them, uh, they'd freeze them off. Uh-huh. And I was always like, because they're... At hills? No. Oh. 
But it hurt, it hurt like a son of a bitch. Like <laughs> you went to the concession stand, you're like, I got hey, my warts back. I dip this in an icy. Yeah. That's how you kept getting them. But no, if I went and didn't, because I was like really little. Yeah. And if I went and didn't, whatever, my mom would take me to Hills you and buy a little toy. shit. Yeah. So I was oh, always like, man. burn or freeze off anything <laughs> yeah. you want if I get a new action figure. Is that a war? I think that's another that's a war. war. Mom, <laughs> I think that's a war. We better go. <laughs> Okay, I'll sign. All right, so uh, speculation continued. The outward bound trend uh, when another newspaper published an article in which a professor of yoga suggested that the men may have been trying to carry out a telepathic telepathic experiment with high frequency thought waves. He explained that in experiments of this kind, alkaloids such as LSD or mescaline I'm listening. are taken to step up mental alertness and the frequency of the brain. Meanwhile, on August 27th, a third man, a suspect, had moved in the limelight. Elcio Gomez, a friend of Miguel Viana and Manuel da Cruz, was arrested for making contradictory statements. In the Brazil Journal, on August 27th, it was reported that Donna Nelly Pereira da Cruz, Manuel's widow, had stated that she had been present when there was a quarrel between her husband and Elcio Gomez. Described as an assistant of the dead men. Uh, it's also, there's some other stuff I found where he kind of comes across like uh, he wanted to be a part of their group. Uh huh. And they, like, for whatever reason. It was a two man show. Didn't kind of let him in. Yeah. So he seemed to kind of always be on the outside. Third wheel. Yeah. That um, hurts, man. You know, that, hurts, <laughs> that, that cuts you deep. Uh, which, speaking of, we're going to have a new uh, host soon. What? And, uh, you know, I'm just thinking if you could maybe take a seat more oh, further back in the room. Oh, <laughs> man. I'm just trying to make things, you know, just freshen things up. Is it Donald Trump? It is Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, uh, that'll be you. Look, I feel like the guy's got some energy. I like the energy. <laughs> He's got something to say. He's got something to say. I like the energy. <laughs> uh, Fuck him. Some say the best energy. <laughs> the best. The biggest. Uh, many people, many people say I have many the countries. He has the best a lot of his friends, a lot of his friends tell him. Great people, great people. <laughs> okay, once uh, Gomez was under examination, there were many more statements from him. Uh, Miguel, Miguel and Manuel, Manuel, like Gomez, were quote scientific spirit spiritualists, uh, and that they attended, like many other Brazilians, they regularly attended seances. They were members of a secret society with unknown uh, aims, but apparently devoted to spiritism. That's a really good secret society, then. <laughs> Nobody knew anything about them. Another, another revelation was that almost all electronic specialists and enthusiasts are in nerds? the district are spiritualists as well. Oh. So, uh, furthermore, it was told... I kind of like that, scientific spiritualist. Spi- scientific spiritualist. It's hard to say, but I like it. it. I like it. It's a good term. Uh, furthermore, it was told how Miguel and Manuel were hopeful of entering into communication with being with beings on Mars, that they collaborated in many strange electronic experiments, that they and Gomez had engaged in an experiment in Manuel's garden. This was later confirmed by M- Manuel's father when a device that they had built had exploded violently. Go. Oh. Above all, Gomez's story of the happenings on June 13, 1966 was made public. It seems that with others, Gomez had gone down to Atafonia Beach on June 13th at the invitation of Miguel and Manuel. They had just arrived when an intensely luminous object came down over the shore. Five minutes later, when it began to rise, there was a blinding flash and an explosion which rocked the city of Campos and buildings far beyond. When inquiries were made, local fishermen testified that they had seen a flying saucer fall into the sea. I went back and looked, and this is like kind of like a big like uh, back then. Like it was reported yeah. pretty much everywhere. It was like a big nobody knew what the fuck it was. Especially like sixty six. That's just yeah. And this uh, LCO Gomez guy says that uh, Miguel and Manuel kind of invited him out of nowhere, and that in his opinion they like they were kind of responsible for whatever it was that happened because they called it oh because yeah. it was. Too much of a coincidence that they would be there at that exact time. No, yeah. both die and like later that yeah. Uh, at this stage, um, it's found out that the Brazilian Naval and Air Force Intelligence Services were taking an interest in both the deaths and the explosions. In the very last report, 
appearing in the O Cruzero of September 16th, there was a story that the Navy's monitoring ser- service had intercepted a strange conversation over the air between three radio stations on the evening of June 12th. The station prefixes were CKJ-22 and CK-22, who were talking to CKJ-21. Details of the conversation were not disclosed, but investigations had shown that no such prefixes or radio call signals existed in the register of amateur radio transmitting stations in Brazil. And they also found out that the CKJ-22 and CK-22 were in the same area. So it seems kind of like Miguel and Manuel were one of each of these, and they were talking to a third party somewhere somewhere else. Huh. And uh, Gomez had said at one point that Miguel and Manuel had, I forget what he called them, like pirate radio stations. Yeah. So unregistered radio stations. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that's kind of weird that it seems like the two of them had, and like they found it uh, like right close before their death. Two last words on the case were recorded in the same article. One was that the remnants of the lead from which the masks were made had been found in Miguel's workshop at his home. Also, a book on scientific spiritualism was found, with passages marked regarding masks, intense lumin- luminosity, and accompanying, spirit- accompanying spirits. The other was that Miguel's sister had disclosed that her brother had told her a day or two before the Adafonia incident that he would soon be carrying out an important mission but that it was a secret he could not disclose to anybody. He repeated the words a few days before he and Manuel were found dead on the hill. Uh, from then onwards, there's not been a whisper of the case in Brazilian press until uh, a little bit later. Uh, so then it comes out. So they got these two dead guys, uh-huh. lead masks, up on a hill, up on a hill. Uh, they another don't, dead guy a couple weeks. A couple years earlier. Yeah, a couple years earlier on another Another, hill. and he, they were electricians. He was a TV electrician, basically. Yeah, he had the lead mask, too. Mm-hmm. Um, they couldn't find any signs of violence. They couldn't find any signs of uh, drugs or anything. So, um, let me find out where we are here. Um, Many years later. So... By mid-September of 1966, the case had slipped into oblivion. Uh, After the bodies had been found on the hillside on August 20th, 1966, the Brazilian newspaper stated that no signs of violence had been found on them and that autopsies had had been performed, which revealed no signs of poison in the internal organs. Likewise, no no known cause for the cardiac failure. After a year had elapsed, the Brazilian press reverted to the affair and reported that the bodies had been exhumed for certain organs to be ex- examined again for poison. What could be left after a year? And they were already, It was already decomposed yeah. to begin with. Uh, the papers also reported the arrest of an associate of the two dead men. That was Elcio Gomez. Um, let me see. I'm kind of skipping around here. I've got... Uh, okay, in... Let me see. So then, on June 28, 1968, under the headline, After the Atomic Test, the newspaper O Globo wrote the following. The Globe. The Globe. I know a little bit. It's from Rio de Janeiro. Uh, they wrote the following. Quote, A blonde man now emerges in the mystery of the lead masks, just at the moment when science had given up. As unattainable, the last hope of securing a technical clarification of how precisely the radio workers, Miguel Jose Viana and Manuel Pereira de da Cruz, met their deaths. The unknown one in man, whose appearance is that of a foreigner, was seen by a witness sitting at the wheel of a jeep and conversing with Miguel and Manuel on the road up to the Moro de do Ventum Hill on the day before the bodies were found. Yesterday, the atomic scientists in Sao Paulo gave their verdict, a negative one, on the tests they have been conducting on the hair from the corpses. And with that, the Rio police delegate in charge of homicide cases has closed the inquiry and and forwarded the dossier to the Ministry of Justice. Uh, The text of the report 
issued by the Atomic Energy Institute in Sao Paulo is as follows. As an exceptional measure, the radiochemical division has conducted an analysis by neutronic activation on some hair sent to them by the Medico Legal Institute of the state of Rio de Janeiro. Four elements were sought in the hair, namely arsenic, mercury, barium, and thallium. The results are as follows. All four elements, uh, there was... Point zero 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 one percent of all four elements found uh, in the hairs, which I guess most of us have that, like from pesticides used yeah. and shit like that. So there's only four they tested for, though. Uh, eight more months passed, and then in the first quarter of 1969, a few more press clippings on the case reached uh, this, where I'm getting this article from. It's FSR. I don't know what it stands for, but they're like a UFO. Type this was like back in six back in nineteen seventy one is when this article's from, mm. but they're like a UFO conspiracy yeah. type magazine from back then. Um, the following paragraphs are a translation. So let me see here. Uh, the the mystery of the two electronic technicians found dead three years ago with lead masks beside them has now been cleared up with the confession of the underworld figure, Hamilton Benzani. Hamilton Benzani, notorious criminal, smuggler, and car thief, already serving a sentence of over 50 years in Sao Paulo, had told a woman relative of his, who lives in Rio, that he had been connected with the murders. Uh, and when the police went to the Sao Paulo prison to interrogate him, he freely admitted it. As yeah, the, I did it. Yeah, I did it. I'd do it again. <laughs> Uh, as the woman relative had told the police he would do if skillfully questioned. Hamilton Bizzani's story is that, uh, wanted by the Sao Paulo authorities, he was hiding in Rio de Janeiro, where he was approached by three other criminals known by the nicknames of Espanol, Wilson Alameo, and Ocasio, who asked him to do a job which would yield good dividends for the four of them. So off they went, where they first engaged a taxi, and then at a certain spot, they changed to a private car, which took them to a spiritualist center. There they met the proprietor of the place, a woman named Helena. Inside the spiritualist center, Hamilton Bazzani was next introduced to Miguel and Manuel, who were already there. Espanol, Wilson Alameo, and Acasio indicated to him by gesture that these two people were to be the targets. During the seance which followed, the criminals learned that Miguel and Manuel were in the city en route from their homes at Campos, del Campos to Sao Paulo where they planned to buy electronic equipment and a new car and that they had plenty of cash on them. Three million! Pointing to a briefcase carried by one of the targets, Wilson Alameo sagely remarked to his companions, See, the spirit of fortune has descended but it will shortly incarcerate in their bodies. Hamilton Bazzani told the police that at the close of the seance, he was instructed to take the wheel of the car sitting outside and drive to the par and drive the party. Uh, Espano, Wilson Alameo, Acasio, Helena, and Miguel Emanuel to the foot of the Moro do Ventim Hill. There, the others forced the two men to get out and go with them into the thickets on the hillside while Hamilton Bazzani stayed with the stolen car. Half an hour later, the three men and the woman returned to the car looking nervous, holding the briefcase containing 6,000 uh, cruceros. Wilson Alameo told Bazzani, we have killed them both. We forced them at revolver to take the poison. Oof. The party then drove off to Guanabara, fixing a rendezvous together for next day, which Hamilton Bazzani, fearing a trick of some kind, did not keep. The police say they are on track of the group and will have no difficulty in apprehending them as they are notorious criminals. One of the press reports said that the police already had the voodoo woman, Helena. Uh, so, yeah. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of speculation that that is all fake. Yeah. That if Hamilton Pisani even exists, that that... He basically, he was serving 50 years. Yeah. Uh, he probably, if he existed, either made the story up to try to get 
a lesser sentence, or they used him as a yeah, just patsy. Yeah, to cover something up. Sure, and they could have, or they could have just been like giving him privileges to you know admit it. And- yeah. So uh, the blonde man in the van, that's never really brought up again. That's just kind of it was a part of the investigation. One day it was going the next. Yeah. Um, no one to this day knows what happened knows really what the real story is uh there's a bunch of speculation still that it was um there's some speculation that they uh were trying to it was like a suicide because they thought they were like gonna go off with the aliens they would like ascend yeah 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 yeah. um but you know there was like being part of maybe a secret society and so my theory is uh, that they so the the radio the radio thing makes me think that they somehow started talking to a third party, and that's where the instructions came from. Yeah, that like they were they're into the spiritualist stuff, but I, I just don't know what the uh, like. And then the briefcase was like the money that they were like somebody had told them it'll cost this much to like yeah. ascend. Yeah, so I don't know. There's a bunch of weird because like the money they had on them wasn't taken. I don't know why he wouldn't take. Briefcase. So like, say if like the one guy's story is true and he drove a car for them, and the other people went and killed them, why would they not take everything? Yeah, they say they only came back down with eight thousand or something. Yeah, like six thousand, I think. Yeah, of three million. With, mm. Supposedly three million in a briefcase. And just I would think too, just because a guy died in another hill two years prior with the same kind of mass that there's something weird it's going not on. Just that group of four people or whatever that, that dude confessed to. And they say something that they sinister. so they stopped at the time. The note says that they should be at the meeting place or whatever. They were actually, according to witnesses and police statements, they were in a bar. And the person there said that the one Manuel, one of them, Manuel or Miguel were acting like really nervous and like uh uh anxious. Uh-huh. So like, you know, maybe they were late getting to wherever they were supposed to be. And yeah, and they got to ascend. So yeah, I don't you know, there's and there's some people that say that they uh they successfully did whatever they were trying to do. Yeah. So when I first heard the story, I thought it was like led like full on masks. Uh-huh. And I thought maybe they like went and basically just suffocated. Yeah. Like took some drugs. Because with the bodies being decomposed already and it taking them a while to exhume the bodies. 66, I can't imagine them having great. They only tested for four different, like, uh, they didn't really test for LSD, stuff like that. So, anything. Yeah, so, weird stuff, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a couple of random dudes with some lead masks in them. And instructions on when to take capsules of pills. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's weird, too, that they had, like, that uh, the thing at the beach that's, like, you know, a lot of people witnessed yeah. it. Yeah. The thing that UFO was there for five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So there's a there's a thing I read where apparently around that time, the Brazilian government had started like a very uh, like a like a big crackdown on UFO related stuff, like almost like they were trying to keep everything covered up. Uh huh. So like this story happened around that same time. So like. Them trying to like push it off into a bunch of other directions, not UFO related. Yeah. Seems Getting like someone to confess. And I almost feel like there's because they, they so according to the guy and the dad confirmed that like they built some sort of machine or something that like blew up. Uh huh. Like I almost feel like back in the sixties. Like I feel like there's got to be like a CIA, like almost like the CIA is involved in this. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like just something weird, like. Some weird shit happened. I don't know what. But, like, what started as just, like, a simple Brandon being like, hey, check this out. I don't know how much is really there, but, like, then, like, the more I went down this, I was like, this is all very weird shit. Yeah. Like, you got espionage. Like, you got criminals coming out saying they helped. So. Well-to-do ladies saying that they witnessed some things. Right. Right. Smells. Fancy ladies. Smells. Smelled bad, so you went to the cops? Yep. <laughs> That area on the hill smells bad, officer. Oh man, I'd call the cops on half of Parkersburg. The people, but then the so the same kid, eighteen year old, that was flying a kite. That was flying a kite. He's also, according to police reports, the same one who you know then found the bodies. Basically, yeah. he's also the same one who had said he saw 
the blonde man of the Jeep talking to them. He's also the one that said, like, he, according to police reports, like, this kid saw every movement they made. Real convenient. Like, yeah. Two days prior, two days later, yeah. the kid saw He was always all. there, always yeah. watching them. So, and they called over a smell. That all seems a little fishy. Yeah, and then, like, that kid's name didn't get released until, like, 2000 yeah. or something like that. So, yeah, a uh, very weird story. I feel like it's how we're going to go. I uh, hope so. We're going to find Together, us with, me like, and you on top of the hill. Yeah. Like, we took some bad, took some bad drugs. Right. We're at the highest point. <laughs> <What's your name laughs> we're at Spruce Knob. <laughs> <laughs> we're sprucing up our knobs together. That's going to be our final episode. We'll Good. We'll record right up to the point. And just jump off. I'm not jumping. I regret nothing. I'm just waiting for for the uh, yeah. overdose to kick in. That's cool, too. Can you overdose on LSD? You're going to have a good time trying. I would think you can, because I would think it would give you a heart attack. Well, that's true. So, so I, don't I, know, I don't think it would be an overdose, but I could see it just being like so intense. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. That's maybe what happened to them. I've had some pretty fucking intense trips. Yeah. I've had nothing but good Drugs, ones. man. They've all been good for me. Oh, well, good for you. Thanks. That's tripping what I was trying to... Tripping right now. That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> All right, stop crying. Are you proud of me? Stop crying. Are you proud yeah, of me? Yeah, I'm proud of you. I did good with the drugs. You did good with the drugs, Josh. All right, well, speaking of doing good with the drugs, uh, we're going to do good with the drugs yep. here soon. Right now. Uh, so I think it's time to about wrap this podcast up. If this is the last you ever hear from us, uh, <laughs> just know that we, we died happy with lead masks. On a hill. On a hill. I'm going to write out a strange note okay. for you guys to find. Yeah. Make it interesting. Military time. Military time. That's the weirdest part. Who uses yeah. military time? Come on. Come on. Come on, yeah, son. Man. Maybe it's the C. That's why I think it's the CIA. Yeah. They would yeah. use. Yeah. I mean, a couple of scientists, uh, spiritualists probably wouldn't use military time. The blind, the blind, the blonde guy, the foreigner, probably, like, that sounds like a white dude to me. German. Some CIA guy. Yeah. Maybe Hitler. Hitler maybe, was a blonde. Maybe Hitler. <laughs> you, what I'm saying is you can't rule Hitler out. <laughs> Probably. We've already established. You can't ask him where he was. Look, in the Hendrik Haifak episode we did, uh-huh. the Hendrik Haifak murders, uh, the first episode of the show, we established then that Hitler's a time traveler. Yeah. So. He could do it. Was he alive in 66? Probably he not. He was not. Okay. <laughs> he was not. <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> No, he was real dead. No, real dead. <laughs> yeah. He was super dead. He was super dead. Good. Okay, good. All right. So. I, I just want to, I, I, I'm on, I stand in the area of I'm glad Hitler's dead. Okay. I'll just say, for I the don't record. know where this is going to go. But just, I, just for the record. I talk about Hitler, but like, I'm glad he's dead. That's okay? brave of you. Thanks. I think. Yeah. It's about time you took a stand. Uh, I have to. I've been wondering the whole time. <laughs> not, yeah. The whole time I've known you, I've been like, I wonder where he stands on Hitler. <laughs> Does he, is he glad he's dead or not? Or is he like, yeah, maybe I'm, he can still be around. You no, know? I'm glad he's dead. All right, good. Good. Fuck Hitler. I agree. Yeah, good. I agree. Okay. Look, man, that's just the kind of podcast we are. Yeah. We're glad Hitler's dead. Yep. We're not afraid to say it. Nope. Cancel us. <laughs> Make us a part of cancel I culture. dare you. Can you cancel if it's only like 20 people? <laughs> 10. Here in, like, in five years, we're going to have to apologize for saying that. I hope so. Like, the world's going to go to that point where we're like, hey, guys, we said some shit back in five yeah. years ago. We Look, we apologize <laughs> at the time. We felt we felt like we were right to to be glad Hitler was dead, yeah. and we understand that we were wrong. Hitler then. life matters. Hitler life. Look, nah, Hitler, I <laughs> that's awful. Now that Hitler's returned, <laughs> uh, now that Trump has brought Hitler we back, apo- we apologize <laughs> to our new, uh, you know, Führer. Führer. Furrer. We have fallen off the track. Furrer. <laughs> Furrer. All right. Uh, like I said, check us out on uh, whatever podcast, whatever you're listening to yep. us on. Like you'll probably keep using that one, so, sure. You know, but you can tell other people. Tell them. Like we're on other tweet about ways us. Thing. Follow, Follow us. us on Twitter. Yeah, we're on Instagram at Middle Age Mediocre. Uh, Let's see if we can get more followers. You or me? From we're on this. Facebook. Yeah. Let me see. So right now, at the time of this recording, uh, I have two hundred and eighty-one followers. All right. And Joel. 281 is so shitty. <laughs> Joel has 405. Probably because like half of those are dude comics. <laughs> like <laughs> Dude comics count, man. Yeah. I've uh, done one show with that we like like each other on Twitter. So, yeah. Let's see who can get some more followers. I How many do I have? 405. God, I was up to like 418 because I remember I was so close to 420. Mm, you went back. They just keep dropping now. You lost some people. Yep. No one wants to read sad, Joel. Yeah, I need I need some more. So catch me up, guys. I'm only at 200, 281. You should retweet the thing about the billboard. 
<laughs> what is it about an advertisement that makes Bill bored? What is it about him, man? I don't know. Retweet it. We'll find out. To, to my lesser followers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does that make sense? I want them all. I can't retweet you. Oh, oh yeah. Cause I'm, I mean, I can quote tweet you. Yeah, quote tweet me. <laughs> Which is weird. Maybe, yeah. I'm eating the mic right now, by the way. Arr, what are we doing? Man? I don't know. Just We're say goodbye. We're sorry if you're still listening to us. All right. We'll see you next week. Maybe. Bye.